What's most appealing about gold and silver is the fact that the metals do not change. We know that certainly in terms of their physical properties, but also the basic fundamentals of what they do to protect our wealth. However, the market perception is a little different nowadays. So in this video, we're gonna discuss the differences and how the market perceives gold and silver and how you can benefit from this and a better understanding of gold and silver right now as we explore. So we know that gold and silver's physical properties indeed are a constant. An ounce of gold will remain an ounce of gold from here until eternity. Even if it gets dissolved or blown up by a bomb, those little bits of gold can be reconstituted in due course. Now, silver is a little different story. It doesn't disappear either. However, it will react to the atmosphere. That's called toning, and some people really like that. And also, the way that planchets are treated, you very well could find silver with milk spots on it. That very well could be a security feature as well. So if you look at the bright spot of life in this case, uh, but what about the silver market has changed uh, and how should we conflate that with the unchanging attributes of these metals? Well, we know that gold and silver provide a hedge against economic instability. That includes market downturns and during periods of rising inflation. And I've recently also talked about how gold and silver can protect you during deflationary periods as well. And if we had a deflationary period, that would not be good, by the way. Now, demand for silver tends to grow when economies take off, but silver can be more volatile than gold. And that is something that is really a tough concept to grasp from time to time because of how silver is viewed and how it is traded. See, silver has more uses than ever before. It is the most versatile metal on the periodic table. Hands down, no contest with any other metal out there. And one would think that should lead to higher prices, but it just depends on the economic situation and the demand for products that use silver and also the ever-changing technologies that uh, in some cases, like in the areas, area of photography, where there's not nearly as much silver as there was in the past. A lot of that has been taken over by the versatile uses, including in, in EVs and photovoltaics. And by the way, uh, it's just the batteries in electric vehicles, but also, more importantly, battery technology in hybrid vehicles, including plug-in hybrids. I think those will probably pick up as EV sales have kind of waned a bit. But we also have other aspects, too, that have changed. We know gold can be a more powerful diversifier than silver and is less affected by economic declines. That is something that we have seen and are kind of seeing in a sense today as central banks have been holding more gold. Gold is the ultimate safe haven. It has always been more stable than, than, than silver because silver is seen as an industrial metal, but it's just that has been amplified as of late. Hence why the gold to silver ratio is pushing 90 to one as I record this video. And even in the low 80s and high 70s, that seems to be kind of the new normal, um, although many people feel that it's still out of whack. And I do too, but the thing is, is we have to understand that we may be entering in a, a new reality for both gold and silver, especially with gold now fairly consistently trading at all-time highs. Gold and silver can be purchased in a variety of investment forms, including physical metals, exchange traded funds, mining stocks and funds, futures and options. There's a lot more ways to buy the metal, but in reality, there's really only one way to buy the metal in physical form, and that's what you see here in the form of coins, rounds, or bars. Anything else is really just an exposure to silver's price, whether it be an ETP, an ETF, mining stocks, and what have you. And it's a bet against the production or the future of what the price is going to be down the road. Always keep that in mind, but people do get confused about that. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with venturing out into those other areas, but understand the counterparty risk involved. Because really, in the end, if you don't hold it, you truly don't own it. 
And that is a phrase that we've heard time and time again in this community. And it certainly is truer now more than ever before as the there are more versatile ways to invest in the precious metal space in general. Now, gold and silver may provide this hedge in a potential economic or market downturn, as well as during sustained periods of rising inflation, like what we're seeing right now. You know, the value of this has uh, dropped, uh, you know, uh, tremendously over the past couple of years, well over double digits. Um, and But still, this is something that a lot of people flock to. The strength of it is up. And, but that's only because other currencies are not doing nearly as well. Um, our inflation is not nearly as bad as some other places. And the, the currencies that are weaker, that have uh, much less inflation or no inflation at all, they just don't have the impact that the dollar has, which is why the dollar is so important, which is why it's always good to keep that in mind whenever you're stacking gold and silver. And in a sense, when you use these to buy this, it's always good to have some of these on hand to protect you so you don't have to liquidate this in an emergency or in, 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 a, in what's no, what would be known as an immediate emergency or unexpected expense. An unexpected uh, expense or an emergency now is much different than an SHTF scenario, which is really where gold and silver is going to come into play or a, a, a massive economic downturn to the tune of an economic crash or, or a currency collapse or a currency reset, which is probably more likely to take place in the next five to seven years or so, who knows. But we know the difference between the how the markets have perceived is, is what's tied to what's going on in the world around us today. And right now, silver may be more tied to the global economy because of over 50% being used in industry and also in technology. You know, it's not just batteries, lithium batteries and, and other types of batteries where silver is used, but it's also smartphones, tablets, uh, automobile electric systems, solar panel cells, military applications, which has been the great buzz as of late. You know, we really don't know how much silver is used in military applications, although I think a lot of people are overemphasizing the, the numbers. Um, and I think they're doing it to try to make a point, but I think it... it it doesn't bode us well to to be dishonest there or to uh, to speculate uh, too much in one direction or, or another. Like for instance, 500 ounces of silver in a Tomahawk cruise missile. It's probably nowhere near that much. But silver is more sensitive to economic changes than gold, and that is what's made it more versatile. And gold has limited uses outside of jewelry and investment purposes. So. This is why gold tends to be uh, more stable. Its uses in jewelry and other factors as a dormant and for treasury to, to treasure means that gold essentially is going to be more valued than silver. I know that may sound strange when you think about it, but in the end, something that is more treasured is likely going to be worth more. Uh, in terms of a price, not only because gold is so much more rare than silver, but because silver's versatility and its uses means that there are more options for it to be recycled. And it is on a grand scale, much more so now than ever before. And I think we're going to continue to see that, especially with only mining supply ticking up a little bit uh, from last year to this year. But that could change and it could tick back a little bit. But essentially, silver production has not changed dramatically over the years. The supply and demand fundamentals have, and uh, we're now we're in a deficit for silver. Uh, but it's not enough to rock the silver's price, at least yet. Why? Because of the, uh, the market and how the market is padded, essentially, with all the derivatives that are out there. That includes on the COMEX, it includes in, in exchange-traded products and other things out there that can either prop up or, in a sense, suppress silver's price. And, and people don't think about how it could be propped up, but that is a possibility, too. Uh, and because of that, silver is more volatile than gold. And, and that is something that, uh, that uh, we have to understand more so now than ever before. There are times when silver may go up and gold may go down and vice versa. Silver just is more erratic. Uh, and it may be to the benefit of silver stackers when the gold to silver ratio narrows for a couple of days, 
only to be smacked down a couple of days later. And a lot of people can chalk that up to price suppression, but I really do think that there is more to it than just that. The natural market and the, and the complexity of the silver market, which is tiny, means that it doesn't take a whole lot to move it radically in one direction or another. So that is something to keep in mind. And uh, so when we think about it, uh, what is the best hedge against economic instability? It's going to be gold. And in fact, most of us feel that right now, as I record this video, we are in the midst of the beginning of a downturn in the economy. Um, and gold is already trading at all-time highs. Silver is nowhere near there yet. However, depending on how and when you buy your silver, you can hedge and you can, against inflation, um, even with the price being where it is and where it has been for the last couple of years. If you were to practice dollar cost averaging, for instance, last year, when silver did not keep up with inflation, you still could have, yes, protected yourself against inflation by buying silver. If you utilized dollar cost averaging or variation of it, especially, especially if you were to enhance it by buying a little bit more silver when the price is low and less when the price is high. And that, by the way, that price being tied to premiums as well, such as silver eagles that we saw to the tune of 10 to $15 above spot. That's a no-no if you're stacking silver. Never buy silver you know, with 40, 50% premiums above spot. Not a good way to uh, help your dollar cost average. No question about that. So given that, given that silver is so much cheaper than gold, uh, it makes it more accessible to smaller uh, retail investors, I guess, of the actual products themselves. And that means that you can stack a little bit more for not as much money, which means that there's a potential and silver does have more potential because there's a lot more headroom there if you compare it to its all-time high. But even if you were to cut that by a fourth, uh, if you want to average it out, considering that the 2011 and 1980 highs were anomalies, then that means that uh, uh, you've got a lot of room for silver to move, especially considering that when you take out and you chop off those all-time highs, silver really is still undervalued as a commodity, much less as a monetary metal compared to most other commodities since 1980. Uh, doesn't mean it's massively undervalued, but when you chop off those tops the, the very short time that they were up that high and average it out, it's still somewhat undervalued, which means that it has potential. So I think it's a good idea to consider silver, but I think it is also a good idea to hold on to some gold. And if you have a considerable amount of silver, to consider diversifying into gold uh, as a conservative alternative to the volatility of the silver market. But this is the type of thing that we have to deal with with both of these metals today. Silver is an industrial commodity. Silver is money. Silver stackers like to consider silver as money and is massively undervalued and massively price suppressed. And it's only a matter of time before uh, everything breaks and the price just skyrockets. Don't expect that to happen. In fact, I would never expect that to happen. Expect it to preserve your wealth over the long course of time. You keep that in mind and you stay real about silver, it's going to really treat you right. And what does that mean? It means it's going to live up to your expectations to preserve your wealth as a monetary metal, even though it's an industrial metal, even though it's a commodity. And that is the best thing we can hope for for silver. And to me, that's just good enough. And with gold, I think it's going to just really solidify the idea of a small, compact store of value in a very, very small space. And I love that about gold. And it's a beautiful metal. And silver is a beautiful metal. And I love them both for different reasons. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.